Raj. Um, once again, good afternoon to everybody joining us um, for this standing committee meeting on community safety, cultural affairs and sports on the 17th of October. Um, the members of this committee has just returned from an exciting um, oversight visit to the Robben Island um, Museum, where we looked at such an important national um, heritage site and specifically discussing with the council members as well as the new CEO of the museum and her senior leadership team, the importance of that heritage site, not just to the national story, but also to the Western Cape story. And we're looking forward to some of the um, discussions and ideas that have come from that. Um, that leads me into why we are here today, and that is for the deliberation and finalization on the Heritage Western Cape shortlist. Um, and this, as you know, members from previous experience, we submit a shortlist to the Minister of Cultural Affairs and Sports in the Western Cape. The Minister then um, nominates uh, or appoints uh, members to the Heritage Western Cape Council. So these um, members serve a term on council. And as you know, the, um, the names um, and some members are sort of um, their terms expire earlier than others because not everybody starts the term at the same time. So at the moment, there are seven members on the um, on the council, and we need to now replenish that list to make sure that um, more people can be appointed for those whose terms expire. Um, members, we're going to go into um, a briefing from uh, Mr. Janse van Rensburg from the Department of Cultural Affairs um, and S Sports, and then um, we will then go into the deliberations. But before we do that, just some admin uh, matters. As you know, this meeting is taking place um, both in committee room two in the legislature as well as online. Um, so I would then ask that all the uh, members please first introduce themselves and then all of our guests in the room also introduce themselves and then we will go to the members joining us online and if you are a member standing in for another member as an alternate please also let us know that so that we can make sure that the minutes reflect that my name is gillian postman and i'm the chairperson of this committee uh, to my left is mr wasi matthews who is the procedural officer um, for this committee I'll hand over to the next member on my left. I'm Peter Murray. I'm a member of this committee. Good afternoon, Deirdre Barma, member of the committee. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, Ben Daza, senior procedural officer for the standing committee. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can I now then ask all the members online, please, if you could introduce themselves. Member Fry, I'm an alternate member on this committee. Good afternoon, everyone. I am the Bans. I'm standing in for member Member Surikam. Thank you very much. Um, are there any officials from the department? Good afternoon. Uh, Michael Janser van Rensburg, Director for Museums, Heritage and Geographical Names with the department. And I'm joined by uh, my colleague, Colette Schiermeyer, the Deputy Director uh, for Heritage in the Department. Thank you very much. Um, any other officials uh, joining us? Or anybody else online? I'm, I'm sorry, I can't see who's online because the computer screen is behind me. I don't see any anybody else, so I'm just going to note an apology for um, member Trejo as well as member Masuli Kama and Honorable Plato. As you know, as you've heard, member Ayanda Barnes is standing in as the alternate for member Kama and member Christopher Fry is standing in for member Plato. Colleagues, uh, what we're now going to do is just uh, go straight into that presentation from Mr. Janse van Rensburg. And then if there are any questions after that, we'll address those. Thank you very much. Uh, please allow me to just share my screen. Uh, 
I hope that is visible to everybody. Yes, it is. It's visible to us in the room. Thank you very much. Um, then again, from my side, um, good afternoon, uh, members. Um, I will be briefly taking you um, through this presentation on uh, the Heritage Western Cape and the process to be followed when appointing the Council um, of HWC. To start off, um, I will just remind us of a quote from the preamble of the National Heritage Resources Act, uh, which says, our heritage is unique and precious and it can be renewed. It helps us to define our cultural identity and therefore lies at the heart of our spiritual well-being and has the power to build our nation. It has the potential to affirm our diverse cultures and in so doing, shape our national character. And it's for this reason uh, that appointing um, the, the right uh, or correct qualified and diverse members to HWC Council um, is so important. An overview of uh, this presentation um, of uh, 13 slides uh, is as follows. Uh, we'll cover briefly the constitutional and legislative mandate, um, then look at the establishment of Heritage Western Cape, the functions of the entity, um, count the council of the entity, and then the process for appointing the council, the requirements of members and areas of expertise to be considered, and then the principles that needs to guide the appointment of um, council members, and then just a concluding statement. So with regards to the constitutional and legislative mandate, uh, we draw this from the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa and also the Constitution of the Western Cape. In terms of our uh, national constitution, I will refer you to section uh, 24B2 um, and in particular um, subsection B uh, that reads to have the environment protected for the benefit of present and future generations through reasonable legislative and other me measures. And that include um, the highlighted area to the, that's uh, the promotion or to promote conservation. With regards to the constitution of uh, the province, uh, I refer to section 81N that requires that the Western Cape government must adopt and implement policies to actively promote and maintain the welfare of the people of the Western Cape including policies aimed at achieving the protection and conservation of the natural, historical, cultural, historical, archaeological and architectural heritage of the Western Cape for the benefit of the present and future generations. And then we also just take note of that um, this is a set schedule 4A competency in terms of the constitution for functional areas of concurrent national and provincial legislative uh, matters. Now, the establishment of HWC, uh, we find that in the National Heritage Resources Act, Act 25 of 1999, empowers uh, the Minister um, of Cultural Affairs and Sport to establish a Provincial Heritage Resources Authority, which shall be responsible for the management of the relevant heritage resources um, within the Western Cape. Now, Provincial Heritage Resources Authorities are established as body corporates capable of suing and being sued in their corporate name. Heritage Western Cape specifically was established in terms of this national legislation um, on 25 October 2002. Now, the functions of Heritage Western Cape relates also, or we draw that also from the National Heritage Resources Act, which establishes the, the Provincial Heritage Authority to perform various functions, uh, which include among them to advise the Minister on the implementation of um, the Act or relevant provincial or municipal legislation, to protect and manage heritage resources in the province, to maintain a database on heritage resources in accordance with national standards, and to determine the competency of local authorities to manage heritage resources in accordance with the national system for the heritage grading of um, local authorities. Now, specifically to the Council of Heritage Western Cape, uh, the Western Cape Provincial Regulations prescribe that HWC shall be under the management and direction of a council the council serves a period or a term of three years, and the council must meet at least um, four times per year. 
The term of the of office of the current council members, and um, this is all seven current council members come to uh, or expires at the end of this month on 31 October 2022. Um, this council is also empowered to establish subcommittees. Um, these committees uh, may have a different term because they are then in turn appointed by council. And the current um, subcommittees of the HWC Council are as follows. We've got the Heritage Officers Committee or HOMS. We've got the Archaeology, Paleontology and Meteorites Committee known as APM. We've got the Built Environment and Landscape Committee known as BALCOM. The Impact Assessment Committee known as IACOM. The Inventories, Grading and Interpretations Committee known as IGIC. And then also the Internal uh, Appeals Committee. The process for appointing council uh, members to the Council of HWC in terms of the Regulation 2 provides that the councils shall be appointed in the following manner. The provincial minister must invite the general public to nominate persons for the appointment as council members. Once such nominations have been received, the provincial minister must refer them to the standing committee and then the standing committee must compile a short list of candidates from the nominations received and submit them uh, to the provincial minister. Now, in order for um, a member to be appointed to council, uh, the following must be adhered to. They must be a South African citizen, be a permanent resident uh, in the Western Cape, and have knowledge of and qualification experience or interest in subjects related to heritage resource management. Now, we've provided a list here below um, of various areas referred to um, within the legislation and used um, or needed within the expertise in HWC. They are archaeology, anthropology, architecture, town planning, urban design, geology, paleontology, history, law and intangible heritage. Over and above this, um, also recognizing that the Council of HWC is the council of the entity and therefore the uh, accounting authority supporting skills such as governance fin and financial management and legal expertise um, can also be relevant um, looking specifically at the council uh, members. Now principles to guide the appointment of council. The provincial minister appoints the council of HWC from the shortlist submitted by the standing committee. Council may consist of between four and 14 members. Um, in appointing members, the minister must take into account the following. Firstly, cost effectiveness and efficiency. Second, effective administration and service rendering. Thirdly, capacity in the specific categories of heritage resources to be managed. And fourthly, cultural, geographical and demographic considerations. Looking at that, um, the recommendation is that um, six members be appointed um, to be within that four to 14 members um, um, criteria. Um, and then uh, and that will also assure a cost effectiveness and effective administration, take, uh, keeping in mind that the council will appoint subcommittees um, that will um, look at the um, the ongoing matters of HWC in those committees that I previously mentioned, um, the APM, IGIC appeals, et cetera. And then uh, also important to note is that no member may serve more than two consecutive terms. In conclusion, seeing that the term of the current HWC Council expires at the end of this month, uh, the Minister um, has issued an invitation to members of the public to nominate suitably qualified candidates. Advertisements in the three official languages were placed in print media as well as on the website of Heritage Western Cape. The call for nominations also circulated to conservation bodies across the province. As a result, a total of 31 nominations were received. Uh, the provincial minister submitted this uh, long list to the standing committee in terms of subregulation 2.3, and then the sub standing committee is therefore requested to compile a short list uh, from these nominations received in terms of subregulation uh, 2.4. And uh, this slide is just to show the ads that were published in the, the various newspapers uh, that went live on 21 September 
and I believe the deadline was for October. And uh, the newspapers that they were published in included the Athlone News, the Atlantic Sun, Cape Argus, Southern Mail, Fukani, Daily Sun, and Die Burger. And thank you so much. Uh, that brings to the end of this presentation. Thank you very much, Mr. Janse van Rensburg. Members, can I get an indication of whether there are any questions on the process? Um, on the work of Heritage Western Cape or any questions on the qualification criteria for um, members of Heritage Western Cape, or if you have any questions for Mr. Janssen van Rensburg in general. Member Bartman, I saw your hand. Thank you um, so much, Chair. In the presentation, oh, firstly, I'm because I'm new to the particular committee to cultural affairs specifically, I don't know find out does the law or the regulations speak anything specifically that we have to look for in the qualifications um, in the respective persons. Um, that's the first part. My, my follow up will depend on, on that. Thanks. OK, Mr. Federico, do you want to answer that? Thank you very much. Thank you, Member Bartman. Um, so the regulations require that um, the nominations must have knowledge of and qualifications, experience or interest in subjects related to heritage resource management. Um, and so the guide on slide, uh, what was it, slide nine, with the archaeology, anthropology, architecture, town planning, urban design, geology, paleontology, history, law and intangible heritage um, can be the guide there. Um, but uh, it is quite broad, as it says, subjects relate to heritage resource management specifically, and that's where it stops. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member Bartman, is that a direct follow up? OK, and then we'll hand over to Member Murray. So if you can ask your follow up, Member Murray will then ask his question and then we'll get a response. Um, thank you, Chair. Chair, the, the, the subjects matters listed. It, it ranges across BA, law, sciences, you know, those type of faculties. Is this is there specific skills that the department is either looking for on the board that is currently lacking or that needs to be strengthened or improved in terms of, of the current board so that we can just um, understand, for example, if one person has an accounting degree, maybe we have to boost it with geography, for example, extra on the on the board nominations. Thank you. Thank you, Member Murray. Your question? Yes, sir. Uh, I find it strange that the people who, who cry out and want their cultural identity remembered and established and honoured are not people who's, who have studied archaeology, anthropology and architecture. I just want to know whether they will ever be represented on anybody if this is the criteria. If you want the coin, a Greek one, a Goring one, and a Marquas, do you really think that prior to 1994, any of them had any inclination or desire to study paleontology and archaeology, anthropology. I don't understand. This is supposed to, our heritage is unique, it says the introduction and precious, and it cannot be renewed. It helps us to define our cultural identity and therefore lies at the heart of our spiritual well-being. And we are a country of diverse cultures. What is cultural awareness and involvement in civic affairs. Uh, is that not the criteria? It's a lot of people who's deeply involved in cult the cultures of the brown and black communities, but they don't have a degree in archaeology. Those degrees mostly you'll find amongst the white people. Uh, are we happy with the, with the criteria as it is here? Because I'm not, I don't see any people rushing with a, 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 a degrees in archaeology and anthropology to be to be uh, considered. Thank you, Mr. Murray. If you could just maybe pop the mic off before we get that response. Member Bartman, is that a new question or a question on your follow-up? Sorry. 
a suggestion to Mr. Van Rensburg. Can we can we get the response from member uh, from Mr. Janssen van Rensburg first? So, Mr. Janssen van Rensburg, I'm not sure um, whether you heard both um, questions. If you could respond to that, and then I'll also respond um, in terms of the process that this committee will follow um, to um, um, in terms of Mr. Murray's, um question. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, let me respond first to the question from Member Bartman and then to the question of uh, Member Murray. So with regards to Member Bartman's question on, you know, is or are there specific uh, knowledge and experience that the department is looking for? Um, so yes, um, we are looking for people that have uh, knowledge and qualifications um, or interest in heritage resource management. Um, and those cover um, those, those topics that are listed before. But uh, I would like to further add to that to emphasize that the council um, is the accounting authority in terms of the PFMA. And so it's important that within that scope of heritage resource management, uh, we also have people with financial management um, uh, knowledge and experience or interest, um, legal, um, et cetera. Um, I would also emphasize that um, council um, then delegates a lot of its um, decisions to those various subcommittees, um, to the Archaeology, Paleontology and Meteorites Committee, to the Built Environment and Landscape Committee, Impact Assessment Committee and Inventories and Grading Committee and Appeals Committee. Council then appoints these committees by getting relevant experts in the field um, from that variety of heritage um, skills and experience on those committees. Members of subcommittees do not necessarily have to be a member of council. Um, so uh, I, I hope that helps um, standing committee um, to, to see what the department is looking for in terms of council um, as the accounting authority. Um, within the scope of having heritage resource management experience uh, or interest. Um, then coming to, to member Marais um, question. Um, member, I would just like to emphasize that the requirement um, is that nomina nominees have knowledge of and qualifications, experience or interest in subjects related to heritage resource management. So um, key there to um, people that, that you may be referring to that does not necessarily have the qualification, as long as they can demonstrate that they have um, interest in subject matter relating to heritage resource management, then they could, they could also um, be considered. And very importantly, I think within that list also that uh, um, we've mentioned, you know, history is in that list, intangible heritage is in that list. So uh, it does include um, those people and communities um, that, that you refer to. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Can I just get an indication if there are any questions from the members online? I don't see any. No yet. question, Chair. No question. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Janssen van der Rensburg, I just want to ask um, the, the timelines for advertising and calling for nominations seem to be quite tight. Um, and this is not the first time that we've received the short lists or the long list this late. Can I ask whether there, there are any processes in place to ensure that these um, the vacancies, when a vacancy arises, um, that there's someone keeping track of it to make sure that we don't sit um, every year just uh, during or before the annual report period um, with this problem. Thank you very much for that. Um, yes, that would be um, for us in the department to ensure that uh, we do not put the, the standing committee uh, in a tight spot with regards to the deadlines. Um, we we agree uh, and apologize that uh, this has been brought to the standing committee with, with such short um, notice, um, and we will ensure that in the future it doesn't happen again. 
Okay, thank you very much. I think one of the, the, the notes that we need to make for ourselves is in our next engagement with the HOD and the minister, we need to look at all the entities and the different uh, timelines as well, because I think you guys compete with the other entities within the DCAS um, and Com Safety um, uh, grouping as well. Uh, members, I don't see any other questions for Mr. Janse van Rensburg. Um, Mr. Janse van Rensburg, you are welcome to stay for the, the rest of the meeting, but also if you have anything urgent or any work that you need to get to, you're more than welcome to do that as well. Thank you very much. Um, colleagues, so um, just some background for those of you who haven't been part of this process before. Um, what happens is that the committee um, decides in its own process of how we shortlist and how we rank candidates. What we normally do is we have an Excel spreadsheet, which you will see if you clicked on the link that was seen sent where all the CVs and the application forms of each um, applicant or nominee is um, saved. There's a, a spreadsheet where we keep um, a list of the names, and then each person has a folder attached to them as well with their details in it. The process, although not prescribed, um, normally in this committee what we've done is we score um, by ranking the participants. Um, and then we generally have a discussion and there's a to and fro in terms of um, the score that comes from different committee members. So the score is normally out of five, if I'm not mistaken, per member. And then we look at what the sort of the final score per, per candidate across the, the board is and the Excel spreadsheet automatically ranks them. And then we have a, um, a discussion. The only major requirements that we have is that the minister must appoint between four and 14 persons and that no member may serve two consecutive terms. M sorry, more than two consecutive terms. Thank you, Wasim. You see, you always need a Wasim in your life. Um, so what this requires is quite a bit of reading on the part of members, and it requires that um, when we do do that shortlisting, members need to take into account the um, broad categories of knowledge that um, members of Heritage Western Cape must have. But most importantly, and remember Maria touched on this, we need to make sure that we have as many people who are impacted by the work of Heritage Western Cape also represented. So we need to look through the CVs to see that we do have um, individuals with indigenous knowledge as well um, to be able to share with those who have academic qualifications because sometimes what we learn in the classroom versus what is indigenous and what is uh, taught knowledge um, sometimes slightly differs. Um, but I do think that this um, council does a very good job of, of creating that balance. So um, members, the proposal that I'd like to make is that we uh, talk a little bit now about what that criteria needs to be. And then what we'll do is we, um, in my capacity as chair, I will write to the um, chair of the programming authority and ask the programming authority to give us another date within this week. And then we will meet virtually via Microsoft Teams where we can then do the ranking of the candidates. Um, can I get an indication of me whether members would support that or whether there's an alternate um, proposal? Member Murray? Thank you, Chair. I am very much delighted at your suggestion. We haven't had time to really go through this, and we need to give it very urgent attention. It's time that we reform the past for the better. Representativity is important. Who will represent and who will be represented on this committee is very important. And I think giving us time to go through and doing a ranking on it before we decide is a very good idea, and I support it. Bye bye, Danke Akbar Mare. Um, I think that is important. And I, I think if you go through the list, and I've I've looked through the CVs. Um, there are some really interesting new candidates as well, people who haven't applied before. Um, so I do think we'll find that the, the list as it is, the, the nominees as it is at the moment, um, do offer us an opportunity and we need to interrogate uh, those um, CVs. Members online, um, 
Are you happy with that process? Yes, Chair, I'm happy with the process. I agree. So, um, members, what, what that will mean is I will ask the chairperson of the programming authority um, to grant us a slot on Thursday afternoon, preferably, because I know social development is sitting in the morning with the, um, with the public hearings. So we will try to get a slot for one hour, 30 minutes on a Thursday afternoon, if possible. And then we will do the ranking online. Member Bartman? Chair, um, the Children's Amendment Bill public hearings is in George on Thursday. I do know, for example, Member Chris already has a clash for Thursday. And Member Dan Plato is a permanent member on this portfolio, is the Chair of Social Development. I don't know about other members from the opposition party, and I don't know at the moment what transport they're using to get back. So they might not even have the ability to be on a meeting at the same time while they may be in transit. Um, so we would just need to have to check on that. Thank you very much for that. Like I said, I'm going to request the slot, whether the slot is granted or not. That's up to the programming authority. Um, and we will also obviously speak to the members to find out whether they're available. If they're going to George, I'm pretty sure they're going to fly and it's a 34 minute flight. So before OK, um, it's, we'll start at one o'clock then just during their lunch time so they can join us while they're having lunch. Um, since we're, they're not here now to speak for themselves, we will just decide unilaterally. But I, like I said, I will ask the programming authority. Um, thankfully, I'm not the one who makes the decisions of when we sit. Um, I wouldn't want that job. But I must say that putting this shortlist together sometimes feels like putting a parliamentary program together because it is quite a complicated process. And luckily, we are now benefiting from the innovation and the expertise that comes from Mr. Matthews because Mr. Matthews is the one who came up with the initial Excel spreadsheet ranking, which I think all committees use um, now. Um, I think the first committee to use it was the Standing Committee on Social Development when I was still the chair when we had to shortlist for the Children's Commissioner. Um, but I'm also very grateful for Member Murray and Member Bartman. Member Murray will remember this. When we did this in the past, we used to get these massive folders which we had to carry around. But it's all now on the SharePoint site. So members, if there are any of you who can't access the SharePoint site, um, I know I've had some problems with the WCPP um, internet. Please just let us know if you can't access it. Um, myself or Wasim should be able to help, um, but it, it's all up there. So now that we've agreed to that item, the next item that I uh, would like us to have a discussion on very briefly and what I'd like to table is the draft a business plan for this committee. Wasim has sent that to you all via email this morning. May I request that all members have a look through that business plan and you think about the strategic work that we've done, taking into account our oversight of visits to the different sites, whether that's to Robin Island, whether that's to the City Hall, to the Central Library, or whether that's a visit to the library in um, Bito. Think about some of those projects and ideas that we've spoken about and start thinking about how do we include that into a strategic plan for next year, because we need to start having a conversation around what the committee's program looks like for next year. And I'd like to have that program finalized um, as much as possible so that we can, um, when I meet with Mr. Daza and Mr. Stamele uh, later this week, that we can also have a better idea of what type of resources we need as well. Um, to, to be able to make that happen. Would would that be in order? So you can you can actually send through suggestions beforehand and we can just populate the document and then uh, by Thursday morning we'll send out another document um, so that we can just have a discussion um, during um, after we've done the, the shortlisting. Um, is that in order, Mitamo? Akbar order, Mit E? Yes, Chair. There's an order with Ek, with me. With Ek, okay. Because play on that door. Um, by thank you for Akbar Bans. Um, colleagues, then there's next further from my kant af. As I can phrase, are there other items of things that you will on the table set for us further gaan? Nee, voorzitter, ons niks items om op te zetten. Onze dag is bijvol, dankie.
Baie dankie. Kan ek ook dan vraag dat alle um, resoluties of vo, verdere vraag van die Robin Eiland besoek ook um, geëpost word na Wasim toe en dan kan ons dit sommer um, donderdag ook afhandel. Uh, geef jylle bykie tyd om te dink oor, oor die besoek en hoopelik krijg ons ook die presentaties van die um, bemarkingsdepartement wat ons nie kon sien uh, vroeger nie. Um, <laughs> die, die vergadering kan nie lekker aan gaan nie, want my Afrikaans sal opdroog by die tijd. So, thank you very much, uh, members. Um, I really appreciate you making time on your constituency day um, for this work. Um, as you know, in the past, the cultural affairs sector and the sports section of our work didn't get as much attention because we're always running out of time to do the things that work. But this is an important department, and I think we we've done very good um, in the last few months in making sure that this department gets the same amount of attention and prim, uh, prominence than the Department of Community Safety. So with that, um, I will be in communication on to whether the Programming Authority agrees to our date. If not, they might come to, uh, back to us with another date. Um, thank you very much. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone.